See how fast we can get going. Pretty level right here. And this is like the deepest step through I've had so far. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. Check it out. It's the Mach Wheel e-bike. Now this one's going to be fun. This is an e-bike that has a very low step through frame here. So great for kind of all around people. This is a fat tire bike with a pretty big battery. So we're going to go ahead and unbox this, assemble it, take you outside with me, go on some trail rides, some street riding, really just see how this thing performs, see if anything breaks, see what like the range is kind of estimating at and just see how this bike really works. Let's get started. Okay, first things first, we need to just take this thing out of the box. There's the bike. Let's see if we can get all this stuff out here. Whoa, that's a heavy box, so that's probably the battery. Another box way down inside. This looks like the accessory box. Looks like it was a little bit tattered during shipping. I'll set these down here and then we'll get back to opening those. It looks like the rest of the stuff is pretty much just all zip tied together. So I'm just gonna try to pull this whole bike out. Again, I forgot to open the box on the bottom and then flip it over. Let me just see if this is too heavy to pull out. That actually ain't too bad. That's pretty light without the battery. I'm just gonna try to pull it apart from the sides. That's one option. There we go. That wasn't so bad. Now I can just slide the bike out here. So there is the bike out of the box. Now all we need to do is really just start cutting and separating the foam and the tie wraps and see what we have underneath. When you're cutting these tie wraps and taking all this stuff off, you don't want to cut any cables. You don't want it to scratch the finish and stuff. Nice rack on the back. That's cool. The stuff with tape, you can pretty much just rip this so you don't scratch it with your scissors. Look at that. The paint kind of chipped off just because the handlebar was resting on it. That is kind of unfortunate. You're going to kind of see that. Hopefully the battery kind of covers that up. The woes of shipping, mock wheel, put a little more protection on their padding. If you're gonna rest this handlebars right there, because people aren't gonna wanna see that chipped on their brand new bike they just bought. There's our screen, keys, zip tied to the handlebars, fender. Another one we gotta put on our front fender. Hopefully there's some kind of instructions, probably not. This seems to be the way they like to pack these up with just that tire right on the left pedal right there. And there we go, guys. That was actually quicker than some. Uh, a lot of them pack it actually a little bit more hardcore. And I guess maybe they want to think about putting more packaging materials in there in certain spots so it doesn't get damaged. But anyway, here is the front tire. Of course, they always have these little plastic guards on them. Didn't see really a plastic guard for the brake, so hopefully the brake's okay. Foxen rim and a Chow Yang tire. Let's check out the accessory boxes. So this looks like the charger, lithium ion battery charger. So this one, they just use kind of a generic charger. They're not branded with their name on this one. Here's the plug that's gonna plug into your wall to charge the bike, just your basic charger with a little LED light there. Instruction manual. So be sure to check on that. If you have any questions, we'll be going over that in a second. Little bag of goodies here. looks like we got extra brake pads, some zip ties. Looks like we have some bolts and nuts. Cool little like, extra hardware here, just in case. I like that. So left and right pedals here. All right, now this is the kind of like best pump I've seen. Well, the biggest pump I've seen these guys give so far. It's not very high quality, but at least you get a pump in the box to get you started. And this is what I like to see, a whole Allen wrench set, nice. I like to see the multi-tools even more so than these separate tool kits, but this looks like a pretty good one. So we're gonna try this out and see how, if these strip or anything while we're assembling this. And then we got some wrenches and stuff. I got one closed open end 19 millimeter, and then I got an open end 15 on one side and 13 on the other side wrench. And then the last thing in this accessory package looks like little clips and stuff. So we got a little couple of screws, we got some clips, and then we have reflectors. If you, I guess if you want to put those on the wheels, you can do that. I actually like that where they leave them off. Some people don't want to have these on their wheels, so at least they include them in the box, and it looks pretty simple to just clip these on and screw them in. Okay guys, and the last box looks like the battery, so let's bust into this thing. It's a Nanyang battery, one piece, 48 volt, 16 AH. 
And there's the battery, so a pretty honking battery. So we have lights here. It looks like it's come in, I don't know, three lights in the middle. So this might be one of those ones that needs to be charged before you can even turn it on. Got six pretty high current connectors there in the bottom. It should just slide in and lock. And actually that's the charger right there. So we're gonna be plugging in right there with the charger in the box. So this is great. You can take your battery out and then you can charge it wherever you want. Or if you look over here, you see this hole here. That's the hole for the charger. So you can leave it on the bike as well and just charge it on the bike if you wanted to. Let's put this whole thing together before we put the battery in and test it out. Ooh, okay guys, seeing a little bit of maybe rust here on the back rack. I don't know if that's because they didn't really cover that with paint or something, but a little bit of oxidation there from the weld and from the other side as well. Look at that, that's pretty hardcore oxidation already. And this has only been sitting in my garage for a couple of weeks. That's the only spot on the bike though. Everything else looks okay except for that little chip there. Actually a little bit of oxidation here too. I don't know, maybe they had this box shipping from California and it was out in the salt air for a while because you see the seat clamp? There is quite a bit of oxidation rust on the seat clamp, which is not a good sign. They might want to start using a little bit more better stainless steel or if this isn't stainless steel, use stainless steel. Couple of cons so far, but you know, let's give it the benefit of the doubt. Get this thing together and see how it really works. All right, so what I like to do guys is not put on the front tire yet. I like to get the handlebars up, the pedals on, and then we can actually hold on to things and prop it up and then get this tire on. So I think what I'll do first is put the pedals on. So there's only one right and one left pedal. It actually tells you on the side here how to screw it on. So that's R, this is R, and that's gonna go on regular thread. And it looks like we're gonna take our dole type of wrench with the 15 millimeter side and just give it a little crank. Don't need to go hard because these things are kind of self-tightening. That pedal doesn't feel very fluid. That's pretty tight where it's supposed to spin. So maybe not that high quality of pedals. That seems like that resistance should not be there. So they need to kind of assess their, um, their pedals they're using. Let's see how this one is. So left pedal, this has reverse thread. So we're just gonna screw it in like we're loosening normal stuff. This one's a little better. Still not that great. You know, it's just got a little more resistance. But this one, man, gosh, that almost feels like there's something binding up in the pedal. So no Tamak wheel. You know, maybe get some better tolerances on your pedals. So this is the first out of a series of bikes I've been reviewing that actually shows you how to put on the light and fender. Good on you, Mach Wheel. Thank you. A lot of these are mysteries on how to do this, but you guys did cover it here. Okay, so definitely want to put the handlebars on before we flip this thing over to put the fender and stuff on. It is not lined up though, so you definitely are going to need to line yours up out of the box. And this thing actually needs to spin all the way around so that the net is actually facing forward. There we go. All right, so for now, we're just gonna get it kind of set center and then we can adjust that all when we get the tire on and line everything up. So this thing just kind of comes up and it's gonna pop right in here, just like that. Yeah, I do need to take this one last screw off. This is the second bike I've seen where the bottom right screw is kind of like reverse threaded. And it's just the Allen wrench. Great that they give you a whole set. Awesome. You know, they're spending a few more dollars and giving you the tools you need to assemble it. And then you just go ahead and put your handlebars in like that. Make sure you keep the spacing on the top and the bottom of this clamp the same. If you have like one really tight touching and then the bottom is loose opened, these screws don't have much bite, do they? And all I'm shooting for is you see that little target there? All I'm trying to do is keep that kind of centered. Okay, so see how I have them tight just so that thing is in there, but I can still slide it around. That's what we want for now. And this bike's pretty cool. It gives you quite a bit of adjustment. Not only can you adjust your handlebars front and back like that, the whole neck here, the gooseneck, actually lets you go quite a bit of degrees from zero to 60, it looks like. Okay, guys, now that we have the handlebars on, I wanna flip this thing over upside down and that's where we're gonna put on the wheel, the fender, and the light. Now you see how that whole thing is braced up? That's why we need to put the handlebars on first, just so we have a good footprint upside down and we can work on this area. So this whole thing right here is just like a plug. Pop this little bad boy out. We're not gonna be using that. Kind of a con, but not too bad. I'm not seeing any plastic piece or plug in the front brake. You wanna have that so if somebody accidentally pulls the front brakes, 
those aren't closing. I've kind of learned my lesson by now to be very careful on hitting the front brakes. So they might want to actually think about doing that as well. And here we go. So first negative thing on assembly. That's why I wish that these bikes would just have a multi-tool. I'm missing a wrench on this side. So there's a nut on this side, which looks like, I don't know, maybe about eight millimeter or six millimeter, something like that. And there's no way I can undo this right here unless I had that wrench. Okay, so the manual says come in from the front and attach the fender and the light and everything on the front. So fender is gonna go like this. We want the front connector here to be right on the front. And then the light, which is dangling here, goes right on top of that. Let's go ahead and mount the tire up. There we go. So sliding the watchers all the way out to the nut. And then as I'm putting this thing in, sliding into the brakes and sliding down the axle. See how all that went in there perfectly? So since that's down in there in the brake and everything, all we do is tighten these two things up. I just need to figure out the spacing on this fender. And this is always a little bit funky. The instructions did show some of the stuff. It still seems like it's kind of up to you on where to put things where, you know, as far as like on either side of this fender brace, because these things aren't really bent the right way. It's almost like you gotta bend them a little bit just to get everything to kind of match up. That one's on okay for now, just leaving it a little bit loose. So a little bit silly since I bent it. The whole thing's touching the tire, so it's like you gotta bend these back now. A Little bit of a design flaw if you ask me, and that's always the case with fender braces. All right guys, I think we're almost there. So not the easiest fender to put on, but I think I got it on pretty good. It's just gonna be a matter of bending these a little bit to kind of get it on. And then one of the things that was kind of loose was this little Phillips screw, you know? They don't give a Phillips screwdriver. So I had to, again, get into the multi-tool here. All right, and let's see, anything else going on here? We got all these tight. Give the wheel a quick spin. And that's how it should be. Just a little bit of drag from the brakes because the brakes are brand new, but it's spinning good. It's not hitting the fender. Let's go ahead and give the rear wheel a spin real fast. Same thing, a little bit of a disc brake drag once in a while. Well, we have the bike upside down. This is one of the areas that I wish these bikes would take care of. Look at all these wires exposed. I mean, it's not gonna be very easy to hit a rock or something here, but if you do, that could be pretty dangerous. I mean, it could sever wires, it could make a fire, short things out, cut power completely through to your bike because this is um, pedal sensor, this is power going to your rear motor. This is also disc brake line as well. I mentioned this in a couple other of my bike videos. Just make a molded plastic, you know what I mean? Some kind of hard plastic cover, maybe an aluminum cover, even better. I mean, this chain guard right here, that's aluminum. So just some kind of the same material maybe as that to cover these wires. Because if you're trying to get into rocks and ledges and you have to go down one and that just pokes that wire, that's going to ruin your day. So I'd like to really see these bikes, mock wheel if you're listening again, try to put on some kind of bottom cover. All right, so I think that kind of does it, having the bike upside down. All we need to do is make sure this handlebar is fully tightened and flip it back up right, tighten all that stuff up. In the meantime, I do want to just go ahead and plug in this battery. And ultimately, this is probably one of the things, guys, you want to do when you first get the bike out of the box. Just start charging your battery. Uh, just nice and easy, plug into the battery port and that turns immediately red. So that should be green when that's fully charged. And I'm gonna be timing that as well and tell you guys how long it takes to charge. All right, guys, let's flip this thing over. Let's see how heavy this thing is. Doesn't have the battery in it. Nice, that's a nice looking bike, man. Really like how the rack's already on, the tail light's already mounted up, and it looks like it's gonna be a switch tail light that comes on with our front brakes. Awesome. So a little bit concerning how I can't push and kind of roll the motor back. I'm not sure if that's like a safety feature or that's just something going on with the way this motor is, but you'd think you'd like to coast your bike back when you want to, but this one can't seem to do that so we're gonna have to check that out when we start riding see if that's you know maybe an issue specific to your ride style and what's comfortable to you you can adjust this stuff however you want and you want this stuff pretty darn tight because you don't want this to come loose when you're riding there is a little plastic cap here. Looks like for the main kind of steering stem all the way down. 
I do like how manufacturers, a lot of them include this little target area with these degree measurements. Just kind of helps you center everything. Okay, last thing I want to make sure of is my controls are at the right height for my angle of attack. So I'm going to want to push these down just so when I'm up high, I can grip them as well as down low. So no hydraulic brakes here, guys. These are just your cable wire brake. Not a big deal, but definitely a hydraulic brakes are more of a premium you know what I mean? Wire brakes are kind of like just the norm, cheapy way to do it. Yeah, I think that's going to be the perfect setup for me. The shocks feel quite loose. So remember, you have um, rebound and dampening here. So we can turn this way. And that actually locks the shock all the way out. It was completely loose when I started. So I'm going to go maybe midway. That feels pretty good right there. Actually, this is the preload. I think I want to click it kind of all the way to the right. Yeah, that feels really good. So if I do hit some big rocks, um, it's gonna just soak those up. So that's the way I like this bike set up. Feels really good here. Shifter, up and down gears here. We got seven gears. The cluster right here, I could see that this might get a little bit confusing if you're riding fast and you're trying to shift gears up and down. You see how small these buttons are? So usually bikes have a little bit of a larger button like on the bottom, but you know, it might be okay. Just gotta get used to the setup here. We got power on top. We have up and down assist in the middle. We have our light in the front, and then we have another little button here on the bottom. We're gonna figure out what that does. Anyway guys, all I gotta do is wait for this battery to charge, and I will be letting you know how long that takes. Okay guys, so this battery took about, I wanna say two hours to charge. If you look at the lights here, it was just one below full. So it was just like an hour or something, almost two hours. That bottom light there is actually a red light. It kind of flashes off and on when it gets really low, but we're fully charged at about two hours from the factory. So I'd imagine it'd probably take about maybe six to eight hours to fully charge. Pop in the bottom down first, and then it just, yeah, it looks like it just clips in just like that. And uh, of course we have our keys here to unlock it if we want to take the battery out. It just pops right up and then take out the bottom where the connectors are. So you don't actually need the key to pop it in, all right? Just to take it out. So that thing's in there, fully charged. All I gotta do now is pump up the tires and in the manual it says, pump them to 20 PSI. So I'll do that and then we will get out and do some riding. All right guys, well there she is all put together. This bike is very nice looking, that's for sure. As you can see, it's that nice gunmetal gray and black. So anyway, that's how she looks all put together. Hopefully the chain and shifting and everything works good. Let's take a little check on the instrument panel here. I'm gonna peel this little protective layer on the gear shifter off. So Shimano 7 speed. Remember we got our throttle here and our shift up and down here. So let's power this on for the first time see what this screen looks like initially so just holding power there we go we got a hello on the screen pretty nice little boot up sequence there we can turn on our front light here with that button there remember the speed adjustments is pretty much all we need to do when we're riding so if i were to hit the speed up and down on this button right here remember yeah so that's changing the pedal assist you see that little thing down there in the bottom circle it's at five now if i keep just pressing the down arrow you see how it's going down to one even down to zero so you don't have to be all the way up to one if you don't want to and then let's see what do these other buttons do so we basically just have one other button on the handlebars on the bottom of this thing so i'm gonna try to hold this thing in or just click it once oh that's cool you hear that so that's the horn it actually has like an electric horn. So that's pretty cool. Let's see if we hold in both buttons. I think there should be a menu here we can get into. There we go. So I was just holding both buttons in at the same time on the up and down. And we're into the menu. First thing I wanna do is get the brightness a little brighter so you guys can see this. So I'm just hitting the power button to select. And then we can go to level one, two, or three. I want it on three. And then let's see if we just hit power again. Yeah, so that brings us back and it selects. So pressing down on the button to go to our unit units it's already in mile where i want it startup mode we can do free mode or safe mode reset our trip right there factory reset it looks like that's all we can do so good enough i'll probably research a little later and maybe share with you guys at the end of the video if there is any way to kind of go into the user settings and take off if there's a speed limiter or whatever if you just leave the buttons alone it resets right back to the menu and your settings are all saved so that is really good to know so really while we're riding all we're controlling 
calling is horn, the light on and off, and it tells you if it's on or off right here on the screen. And then we're just using our pedal assist here. We're just pressing up and down from one to five. That's really all we need to do when we're riding. Let me see if it works on demand when the pedal assist is off, because some bikes don't do that. So we'll do, do a quick little throttle. Okay, so throttle does not work with pedal assist off. So you have to have it on at least one, and then the throttle actually works. <laughs> See that there? That's good to know actually. And I still can't push the bike backwards. So if another negative is the motor locks itself forward. So not really easy unless you lift the whole bike up. That might be a slight negative. Let me see if this thing has a walk mode. Usually you just press one of the buttons and hold it and it's kind of a slower acceleration. I don't see any walk mode on this one. So maybe another little con, no walk mode. You'd have to use the throttle and it has to be in pedal assist one for the throttle to work. So very good to know. Okay guys, so I'm just cutting in here real quick on a post review little tip here you're gonna find in the review that this motor had a problem there was a defect from the factory where there was a lot of crazy vibration noise coming from it probably a manufactured defect there was like some kind of screw or something in the motor you're gonna hear me razzing on it pretty hard in my review but guess what I contacted them and look at this, they sent me a whole new rim with the motor on it for the rear tire. So they're really responsive at least with their customer service and defects of the bike if you have one as far as what my experience is. You're gonna also see at the end of the video, there was some shock leakage where there was some grease on the shocks and they said that was normal. One more concern here is the plug for the power port keeps popping open. So it looks like we're gonna need to like jam something in there or just roughen up the surfaces or even glue it, put a little tape or glue on there because this just keeps popping open. But those are gonna be my main concerns on the bike. I just wanted to cut in here post review and show you those couple of things that they took care of. Enjoy the rest of the ride. All right guys, I think we're ready to go. Let's put our gloves on. And I think what I'm gonna do first is go in the trails up to a peak here. and really see how like the trail works. And then we're gonna do some road riding and see if like we damaged anything. So this is kind of reverse of what I usually do, but it'll be a good test anyway. Anyway, let's get on this thing and see how it does. Let's just start off at pedal assist one. See how this thing, okay, there it goes. <laughs> It just kicked in. I'm just gonna go down my driveway, just get a quick little feel for the bike before we really hit the trails. Brakes feel good, even though they're cable. Anyway, here's the speed one throttle. Okay, so the throttle is linear. As you push up on the pedal assist, the throttle gets stronger too. So it's dependent on your pedal assist setting, okay guys? All the way to seven, you push that button there and then you go down with this top clicker. All right, anyway, let's ride. I thought the motor might be a little more powerful than this. It's not entirely powerful, okay. And it's kind of noisy. I don't know, do you hear that? That's a little strange. Let me try to pick this up and do the throttle. Uh, boy, not a very pleasant sound. That's coming from the electric motor. That's not, you see how it's freewheeling really quietly and nice? Oh well, we'll see how far we get, right? Just give it a try. So really hard to start off. I don't know if that's the motor problem or what. So far, big con is gonna be that motor noise. That's horrible. I'm gonna try to turn the assist off all the way down to zero. That's not making any sound. So with assist off, it's fine. But once you put the assist on and the motor has to work, my goodness, not that great. I feel it vibrating through the bike too. And it's not a very pleasant sound. Well, let's give it the benefit of the doubt and just ride and see if maybe it kind of like goes away. All right, brakes work good. The rear one looks like it needs a little adjustment. We need to pull this out a little to make it a little more tight. All right, let's keep going. That's a loud motor, man. I'm just gonna go all the way on five on the assist because unfortunately that could be a good thing that the motor is dependent on its power on the assist as well. I'm just like pulling the throttle all the way. And it really doesn't feel like it has as much power as other bikes that have a 1000 watt motor. And that noise is just really getting to me. It just feels like there's something wrong in the motor. It's like the, the bearing wasn't aligned right or they use bushings instead of bearings. I don't know. 
could do a shock test real fast. Yeah, they're working. Just feels a little clunky. Seeing a little bit of oil kind of on the shock here. So we'll see at the end of the ride if that's going to be a problem. It almost seems like this gooseneck here is a little too far forward, but I'm just going to deal with it because it's already tight. Yeah, so that motor kicks in like a second after you're pedaling. So this is one of those delayed pedal and delayed pedal assist. So about a half a pedal, it comes on. And then watch me, I let the pedals off. It's about a half a pedal delay. Yeah, so far, this is kind of like a, maybe a city bike because it's not doing very good in the trails. I just went ahead and um, cranked the dampening down by one because it was bottoming out with my weight, like a little over 200. The good thing about having an electric motor is a start. So let's see if this motor can even start me up this about 10% incline here. Full throttle. Barely, yeah. See, you want to have that motor assistance when you start pedaling and it doesn't even help. See right here on the gear shifter? I am in speed one. It's just not enough power. <sighs> yeah, this is gonna be hard. I don't even know if I want to take this bike up here. Forget it. Ride completely abandoned because of this bike. That motor's just too noisy. The power's not enough because this gets really gnarly, the rocks and the ledges. It gets a little more hardcore than what this bike can handle. In the first gear, it just doesn't seem like it's easy enough to pedal because this motor does not have enough power. So anyway, guys, we're going to turn around. Okay, now the motor's kind of like letting me go back. I, see, I think there's something wrong with that motor. Mach wheel's probably going to be pissed, but i got to show you guys how these things work. I'll let you know when I contact them. Well, for this little section, it does okay, but it's definitely not an off-road bike, guys. Man, what is that? bottoming oh and my gooseneck is kind of coming loose and i cranked that thing down hard you see that little play there that's not promising at all and guys just to let you know i'm a fair and honest reviewer i'm not trying to razz on them in any way other than just honestly what i'm seeing and this isn't my first rodeo by the way with bikes i've done a few of them i gotta bust out my multi-tool and try to fix this because this is ridiculous at least it has a kickstand <laughs> can't say that for all the bikes so you see that play that's coming from this joint right here and i really cranked it down so it makes me a little worrisome hopefully nothing breaks but yeah that's as tight as i can really go unless it's gonna break or something all right guys anyway continuing on yep my motor has issues going backwards let's go for it i mean who would want to be like riding in town or whatever and having that motor noise that'd be embarrassing like dude is your bike okay kind of getting really limited action on my brakes and I guess that's what cable brakes are all about you want really want to have hydraulic so with cables if you screw this thing out it makes the cable tighter and you lock it off to get home and then just do a road test I'm just full throttle now on the motor not pedaling at all yeah the suspension really sucks there's a lot of rattling too probably from the fenders and the chain and all that stuff but a little more than usual on the rattles on this bike you hear all this? You hear all that rattling and clanking? I don't know what to think, guys. Definitely not positive on my first ride. The tires feel okay, though. The tires make up for the extreme lack of suspension in the front. It's just not adjustable enough. And this is like the deepest step through I've had so far. It's just made more for like easy, easy riding. Here we are, back at the homestead. The motor sounds like it maybe worked itself out a little bit. Let's get on back here to the homestead, guys. I'm going to go ahead and um, recharge my batteries, put a drone up, and just see kind of how it does on the pavement and the gravel. Because forget it going in rocky trails. Just saying right now, too much clanking going on. Suspension really is not good at all. Look at all that oil already leaking out of the shocks. And what's up with this motor? Anyway, let's give it a more time on the road and see if that motor kind of works itself out. So what I'm thinking, guys, is this is probably just more of like a city bike or a dirt road, but no rocks and stuff kind of bike. Because right now down the gravel, it kind of feels perfectly fine. I do like the speedometer. I mean, it's really easy to see on the speedometer. But man, this motor just sounds horrible. Getting a little better. It's just not working perfectly. Let's go ahead and increase our gear here. Not really having any problems on the regular flat road. It feels good. But man, in that on that dirt and rocks, it was just horrible. Still having weird motor sounds, but it's just not as bad. You drone fans are wondering, 
how my endeavor has been happening with the Skydio too. It was working great and then I had an update and it didn't work anymore. I spent 300 bucks, had them fix it. They said it was like they had to replace some cameras on it and replace an SD card slot, which was kind of ridiculous to me because it was the gimbal that was going limp. They just sent me a whole new one. They didn't even bother to fix mine. And this is how it's working. So, so far so good. I'll have that video up guys so you can see what this thing's doing. I'm just gonna ride kind of down to the end of the subdivision here guys, and then ride up the hill. And we're just gonna really see how that motor sounds. The bike seems pretty smooth on the road, you know? I'm not doing anything special right now. I'm just kind of coasting. Most I've been going is maybe 20 miles per hour. I'm gonna go up this road here really quick. This is all the way number five. And the motor is working. You can kind of hear the motor. It was still having some kind of noises when I was going up that hill. Let's hear how it sounds now. I'm gonna go all the way into seventh gear. It looks like the motor finally got quietish. You can kind of hear that once in a while. At a certain motor RPM, it has that little, there it goes again. Yeah, there it's back. I can feel it has okay power. It's just not all that great because I can feel it like through my whole body. See how fast we can get going. Pretty level right here. 22, about 23 miles per hour right there. Anyway, just like your other kind of cheap China bike with little issues like this, but this one seems to have a little couple more issues than normal. Otherwise on the road, everything was fine. I mean, it's just your basic bike. You're not gonna really feel much of a difference from another bike like this. Yeah, that motor does not come on strong enough from the beginning. So something else you guys wanna know, if you're trying to go from like a dead stop to assisted power for takeoff, it's just really not that great. And that could also just be because the motor is defective or some kind of strange problem with it anyway we're here back at home and that's kind of as much as i wanted to do with this bike i mean i've already got not the best taste in my mouth from it we'll do a little uh, final pros and cons just so we can kind of rehash all the goods and bads about this bike that was the first flight on the skydio 2 that i've had since they gave me the replacement i gotta say that did better this time you know let's get our final kind of pros and cons on this bike and i gotta say i mean you guys saw it just these little things weren't perfect that's the bottom line display is phenomenal everything looks good on the display controls are fine what you'd find on your your other basic bikes you know it's got these kind of comfort grips here they work fine these not these ones aren't the best for trails but for just cruising on the roads and stuff on smooth terrain it's fine Positive, I like the gooseneck, you know? This thing is really adjustable. We had that little problem where it came loose in the trails and you saw how loose that was. And I know I cranked that thing down. The shocks, look at this. So the oil is leaking pretty bad. This is a big glob of oil right here. So it looks like these shocks are going to leak, okay? Let's kind of go through some of the more of the cons. To remember the brakes are cable brakes, the old school cable brakes, no hydraulic brakes here. So they didn't really work that great, not very responsive. They did stop the bike, but I had to really pull these adjustments out to make them even work kind of acceptable. And even then they're kind of subpar. So the cable brakes kind of, they're going with a lot of cheap stuff on this bike. Remember we had so much trouble putting on this fender had to keep bending things around just to make it kind of fit right. Eventually it did get on there nice and tight and perfect and didn't have any problems, but you're gonna have a hell of a time getting that fender on. So that's also a negative. The seat felt okay, um, not that great. It looks like they kind of cheaped out on the material here. It's, you really only have like uh, maybe a quarter inch to a half inch until you're hitting like a hard plastic right in there. There's a little bit more plushness down here on the seat, but my rear end was getting a little bit sore on there. The look of it is really nice. I mean, look at that thing. It looks like you want to have that bike for whatever you're doing. And of course, it's always nice having this step through right here. It's easy to get on and off. So that is a plus, except the motor. The motor is just horrible. So I don't know what is going on with this motor, but you heard all those noises and vibrations that were coming out of it. It's almost just like they did not use bearings. It's like they used bushings or something in the motor. 
So it is a mock wheel branded motor. So I don't know, maybe they kind of cheaped out on that. The tires seemed fine. The tires seemed like they were really uh, footing most of the absorption because the shocks, there's no rear shocks on it. So that's a negative. But the front shocks really are not good at all. Okay guys, hate to say it, but it's true. They just do not take out barely any of the bumps. It's almost like you would wanna just not have any shocks on it at all because when the shocks are working, all you're feeling is this clanking and it's really annoying. And as far as, remember this pedal I was talking about? It's still pretty bound up. I mean, it got a little better. You know, those little things, it kinda like, it, it kinda lets you know how these guys are, are QCing their products. The quality control is probably lacking and that's what we're seeing in the end product is all these little quirks and problems. Let's see if we can just make it do it. See, I mean, you can, you could hear that from the factory, right? And you can know that something's wrong because that just doesn't sound right. The freewheel is great. Look at that. It's spinning forever. So the main two things here are on the road works great aside from that motor vibrating and sound issue. And dirt trails that are flat, no bumps, no rocks. In the trails of the, at my house, horrible. It's rocky, there's little bumps, there's rocks. You do not wanna ride this thing in those kinds of situations. I could see maybe if there was a short section, you could tolerate it, but I wanted to get up to this peak because I wanted to do a drone range test. <laughs> And you saw I had to turn around on the trail because it was just like, I felt unsafe on this thing on the rocks and stuff. Real quick, I do want to see how far we went. 6.2 miles, wow. Something seems wrong there. I don't think I went 6.2 miles. I want to say maybe we went four miles for the road and the dirt. You know, once you get going, it does have pretty good power. And you can see the battery percentage. It doesn't really give you a battery percentage. It just gives you like these notches. So it looks like we're maybe about, still about three, maybe 60% full on our battery. Check for the bike in the description. If you love the look of it and you wanna try it, even though you might get a lemon like I have, go ahead and check the link down below. Go to the Mock Wheel website. There's gonna be a code for you to get a discount. So like if you wanted this for Christmas for somebody and you wanted a really good discount, I'll have the code in the description for you. So buy it through that link and you will get a lot of money off on this bike. But that's my review of the Mach Wheel. Remember, this one we're reviewing here is the Mesa Plus ST. And this is one of the kind of higher end Mach Wheels. And you would think with a higher end, you're getting more of a quality premium product, but it just looks like they need more quality control. It's a cool looking bike, but it needs work. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.